Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking through the key ecological pyramids that you learn about at well, actually every stage of school. You first introduce at key stage 3, you tend to do this as a whole topic at IGCC or GCSE and then it does come back at A level when you do about energy and productivity. So we're going to look at the three key ecological pyramids, pyramid of number, pyramid of biomass and pyramid of energy. And we're going to base this video around this simple food chain that we've got at the top of the screen. So let's just talk through this food chain so that we're clear on what all aspects of it are. So you can see we're starting with the grass over to the left hand side. Now the grass acts as our, I'll just make a note here, producer. Now by that what I mean is it's the photosynthetic organism within this food chain. It photosynthesizes, produces its own uh, sugars, producing its own food ultimately. So the producer starts this food chain. You can see that grass is eaten by the grasshopper and the grasshopper is what's called the primary consumer. So we're just going to write shorthand here for primary and that's usually shown by one with the little naught kind of above it. So that means primary. You can see the mouse then eat the grasshopper. That means that's a secondary consumer. And then at the top you can see we've got the owl eating the mice. And that would therefore make that the main predator, or you could say top predator, I guess. But it's a bit of a short food chain in this instance. It's got the producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, etc. And the predator of the owl. Now, even though I said is eaten by, ultimately, if we just address these arrows here, these arrows mean energy gets transferred to. So the energy within the grass gets transferred to the grasshopper. The energy within the grasshoppers gets transferred to the mouse as the mouse consume it, consume the grasshoppers, and so on. So what we've got here is a very simple food chain with four different elements to it. Now, each of these elements, or each of these organisms within the food chain, we refer to as being a particular trophic level. So the term trophic level refers to the position of each organism within a food chain. So we're just gonna make a note of that term here. So the position that each organism occupies in a food chain is known as a trophic level. Now when you look at these pyramids, ultimately all we're doing is drawing diagrams to represent these particular trophic levels are aspects of these trophic levels. Okay, so the first of the pyramids we're going to look at are the pyramids of number. So that's the first we'll address. So we'll put the heading pyramid of number, pyramid of numbers. Now, ultimately, when we draw these pyramids, what we're drawing almost looks like a sideways bar chart, you, you could say, is essentially just blocks or bars to represent each organism. So I'm just going to draw uh, an example of one and then I'll explain exactly what it is that we have. So I'm just going to draw Here we go. Very simple pyramid of numbers. You can see I've just drawn a block on top of another, on top of another, and a very narrow one at the the very top of this block. Now when we draw a pyramid of numbers, essentially each block represents a different trophic level. So each one of these represents a different trophic level. And the one at the bottom represents the producer, so in this case the grass. So it's always good uh, practice to label each of the bars with what you're actually referring to. So you could see grasshopper would be next, just put a G for grasshopper, then you'd have the mice, and then we'd have owl at the top. Now you'll notice each of the bars roughly, I mean I know this is a, not the best sketch, but each of these bars seems to have the same height. And that's really important. The height of each bar when you draw these should be the same. So the bars have the same height. In terms of width, they should be proportional. Now you could use a linear scale or a log scale. But by proportional, what I mean is if there were, let's say, a thousand shards of grass and that's eaten by 100 grasshopper, then the bar for grass should be 10 times bigger than that for the grasshopper because the thousand is 10 times bigger than the 100 for the grasshopper. So it needs to have the correct scale. 
Now, for the pyramid of numbers to be complete, what we need to do is add the actual numbers. So we've got grass labelled here, so we're going to just put, just going to put a few random numbers. Let's say there is a thousand of the grass. Let's say there are one hundred grasshoppers. Let's say those hundred grasshoppers, just to keep this nice and straightforward, are eaten by ten mice, and that, or those ten mice are eaten by one owl. There you have a very straightforward pyramid of numbers. It shows you the numbers of each organism in this particular food chain and that's ultimately it. It shows you the numbers at each trophic level. Now you could, if you wanted to take this step further, actually say the numbers per meter squared or per meter cubed if you're thinking about the number of organisms in a particular amount of uh, habitat for example. That's a little bit more detailed actually if you go to say the numbers within a particular uh, given area within a habitat. I say metre cubed because when you think about aquatic organisms, you tend to talk in volumes. But uh, more often than not, you tend to just see the actual numbers. So there you can see from this pyramid, we've got a thousand grass, hundred grasshopper, ten mice and one owl. Key thing is that the bars have the same height. And width-wise, they are proportional. Whether you use a linear or log scale doesn't matter, so long as they're proportionally drawn. Now you'll notice that it has a bit of a, if I just draw it here, pyramid shape. It seems to have a wide base and is narrower the higher that you go, this pyramid of numbers. But pyramid of numbers don't always have to be pyramidal shape. Let me give you an example. Let's imagine we have one tree. I'm just going to draw a block and say this represents one tree. Now that one tree could be uh, eaten by or acted upon by, let's just say, I'm just making up a number here, ten birds. Now I'm not going to complete the whole of this pyramid example, but you can see there we've got a very narrow base and a much wider top. So you can see we've got only a one tree for the base but you can see we've got here 10 birds above that and it doesn't really fit with this pyramid shape so key thing to remember is that a pyramid of numbers doesn't always have to be pyramidal shape we're just simply representing the numbers of organisms at each trophic level so that's number one the pyramid of number what we're going to move on to now is the pyramid of biomass so let's put a number two here. We're going to look at the pyramids of biomass. Now biomass refers to actual biological matter or material that makes the organism up. Now one key consideration in this is that you, to be more accurate, you would want to measure the what's called dry biomass of an organism. Now it's difficult because you'd actually have to kill the organism to do so. Because water has no energy value, you need to drain the organism of water to find out its true biological mass, in effect. The actual amount of biological material that makes that organism up. If we think in simple terms, if I was to work out my own biomass, I could uh, jump on some scales and work that out. But if I've just had a drink that would affect the amount of fluid in me. So to be more accurate, I need to almost get rid of all of those kind of measurements. So that's called the dry biomass. Now, when you work out the biomass, you can still draw one of these pyramids. So I'm just going to draw a rough sketch. Again, it's not, it's very difficult on this video with this particular stylus to, to draw these bars accurately. But again, it, it just has to be neat and proportional. But what we're looking at is a pyramid or a diagrammatic representation of the biomass this time of the organisms. Not the number of organisms we have, but the biological mass that all of the organisms at each trophic level have. So we're not just looking at the biomass of one shard of grass, we're looking at the biological mass or the biomass of all of the shards of grass, of all of the grasshopper, of all of the mouse, and of all of the owl that we have. Now, Biomass pyramids tend to be pyramidal shaped, and that's because if you think in this, if we use the above food chain as an example, if you just look at the mouse and the grasshopper, so if we just consider these two for a moment, we can see that the mouse eat the grasshopper, but not all of that biological material that makes up the grasshopper is going to go into that mouse. The mouse isn't going to eat all of those grasshoppers. 
So that is biological material that isn't being consumed. Also, some of the energy that is transferred from the grasshopper into that mouse is being wasted through things like respiration. So you've got a big respiratory loss through movement, through excretion. So it's not able to use that energy to produce its own biomass. So you tend to find that actually, as the biomass pyramid goes up, you're losing, or you're only really transferring on about 10% each time. You're getting a sort of 10% reduction as in size as the biomass pyramid uh, goes up, largely because you're losing such a significant proportion of the energy that could be used in the conversion of uh, biomass. Now, the units for biomass, because this is a biological matter because we're dealing with an actual amount of material here we have the units of kilograms so we've got kilograms this would be per meter squared so here we're considering how much biological material there is in a particular area within the given habitat. So we're looking at kilograms per meter squared. So when you come to label these pyramids, as I've done on the pyramid number where I label the bottom one grass, I could too label this grass, but this time I would give it a value and I would put that value as whatever its biomass is. So instead of saying there's a thousand shards of grass, I would say whatever the biomass is in kilogram per meter squared. I would give equally the biomass of the grasshopper, the biomass of the mouse. I'm not going to guess particular values here, but you can see how this one works. And that ultimately is our pyramid number two of biomass. It refers to the amount of biological material that actually is at each trophic level within this particular food chain that we've got here. Again, bars have to be the same height. They have to be proportional in width. But you can see the biomass pyramid is slightly more detailed than the numbers one because what it does is take into consideration, if we just highlight this part here, it takes into consideration this meter squared part, the actual area that you're looking at. It considers how much of the organism is found within a particular site within that habitat because clearly that value can fluctuate. So there's our second of the three pyramids, Pyramid of Biomass. Now just to really highlight one key thing about this particular pyramid, just to reiterate a really key point. Biomass is the mass of living material in each organism. And in this case, multiplied by the total number of organisms in that trophic level. Now what that means, and this is really fundamental, is that it's so much easier to compare the food value of a small number of large organisms with a large number of small organisms. And because of that, it's a much more accurate indication of how much energy ultimately gets passed on at each trophic level. So I just wanted to end the pyramid biomass with that key point. Now we come to the final of the three ecological pyramids, the pyramid of energy. So for this, I'm just going to, again, shrink the screen a little bit more and just move this a bit higher just to give us a bit more room and to explain this. Now the Pyramid of Energy is by far the most um, accurate and efficient way of showing what's really going on within this ecosystem or within this particular food chain if we're thinking about it uh, that way. And it's because the Pyramid of Energy truly reflects the Pyramid of Energy. It truly reflects how efficient a particular uh, food transfer is. So the pyramid of numbers simply shows the number, period of biomass, yes, whilst it shows the amount of biological material at each trophic level relative or within a given area, let's say. The actual pyramid of energy takes into consideration not just the amount of energy in kilojoules, but it takes into consideration how much energy there is in a particular area within a habitat. But it also, and this is one thing that the other pyramids don't do, it takes into consideration seasonal fluctuations. 
and things like hibernation, for example, when in a certain area there may be more or less of a certain organism. So when we look at units for energy, and in fact we'll just start with this part, when we look at the units that are associated with the pyramid of the energy, they are in kilojoules, kj, per metre squared, per year. And the per year part represents this idea that we we introduce this time variable in it, so it takes into consideration these seasonal variations. So pyramids of energy are in kilojoules per metre squared per year. Now these pyramids are always, always pyramid shaped. I'm just going to draw a very quick sketch again. Not necessarily to scale, but each of these, you can see where this is going. We have grass at the bottom. This would represent our grasshoppers etc etc then we've got the mouse there and the owl at the top and instead of putting the the value as the number or the biomass we simply just write in the energy value so we put in the energy value next to each of these drawn pyramids in kilojoules per meter squared per year now it's always pyramidal shape because as you know in a few chains are inherently inefficient energy is lost along this uh, pyramid or through tr from trophic level to trophic level through a number of uh, mechanisms through everything you might be familiar with Mrs. Gren so through movement through respiratory losses uh, through reproduction and the production of eggs more specifically so there's a significant amount of energy loss that's going on here also for example not all of the organism that is consumed is actually digested or even eaten in the first instance and there's a lot of excretory waste that allows a lot of that energy to kind of escape if you like so this is always going to be pyramid shaped it's always going to have a wider base and a narrower top the pyramid of energy is using the units kilojoules per meter squared per year so it takes into consideration the amount of energy available within a given area of the habitat at a given time within the year and again, just like the other two pyramids, you draw it with these bars representing each of the trophic levels. And that's ultimately it. That's the fundamental differences between numbers, biomass and energy. And as you go from one to two to number three, each pyramid gives you that little bit more information about what's going on. And this is just, all of these just relate to this top food chain that I've got at the top of grass, grasshopper, mouse, owl. Clearly, there'd be more trophic levels if I used the food chain with more organisms in. It's difficult, well I'll say difficult, you can't really draw these pyramids for a food web. Because in a food web, for example, one particular trophic level could occupy two roles. In a, if we imagine the mouse in this instance were to eat the grass, that mouse would act as both a primary and a secondary consumer. So you wouldn't be able to draw a particular pyramid for that instance. So pyramids only really work when you look at food chains within that ecosystem. Okay, hope all that helps.